Good morning! Oh, I do look tired this morning. I went to bed at 10 o'clock last night. Mm. Good morning, everyone. So, Lisa, I was just chit-chatting with you. I hope I have sound. If anyone is on right now, let me know if I have sound. I've been having issues with going live lately and with um, my sound, I, I don't have it. So I, you know, make a video for however long and then no sound. I, am, I wonder if I could listen to myself. No sound. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, I just checked into myself. Okay. Perfect, guys. I'll give you guys just another minute. <gasps> Yay, Lisa. Woo. All right. I'll give you guys just another minute. I, w I really don't know if anyone um, will be watching this live. Um, I apologize for having to um, come on so early this morning. I have a race to get to right after this call. So I'm super excited for this call. Um, gosh, this training, I know everyone has been saying this, but this training is absolutely amazing. Um, I have an entire notebook full of notes. And it's just, it's so incredible to see how many different ways there are to do things. And, you know, just the littlest little nuggets, you know. And, hey, good morning, Terry. The littlest nuggets that, you know, someone may say or just bring up. It's just like, duh. So I, I love this training. I love, like how Natalie said last night, Nat Natalie's video was amazing last night. Um, but just the, the content and the tools that we're given and how closely that we work together. Love it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so a little about me. I, I started coaching last August. So I'm going to hit my year mark next month and I can't believe it. Um, I, I didn't jump in right away to the coaching aspect of things though. I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a discount coach right away um, or work the business right off the bat. So th those first couple months, you know, I kind of uh, dove into the training a little bit and then the more and more training that I watched and that, you know, I got into, the more and more passionate I got about this opportunity. And I think the October of last year was my first challenge group and then I was kind of just head first all the way since then so it's okay to take your time you know if you get started here and there like don't again this kind of you know just connects with don't compare yourself to anyone else you know we're all in different parts of our lives we all have different things going on you know i love this you know your chapter one is you know not so and so is chapter 20 like you can't compare yourself to other people so that i just wanted to kind of get off the bat right away morning jackie so I, um, I've never really had an engaging live video before because I, again, not having sound, I haven't really gone live that much. So, um, I'm going to try to look at the comments too, or else I'm just going to kind of get back to them at the end. So I have a couple topics that I want to go over today. Um, one being kind of the mindset. I really want to brush over that. And then a couple approaches, examples, and, um, a few other tidbits. Again, I'm talking about recruiting. Sorry, I don't think I said that. So Natalie had just an amazing call last night. I watched it probably at 10 or 11 last night. It was Jameson's birthday, and we went out to dinner at 7. So the call was awesome. Um, the only thing that I wanted to add, she she nailed just the um, everything that she talked about, but just focusing on the quality of people. Like, I'm just going to brush over this because she really got in depth with that last night, but the quality of people that you're looking for, like that's more important than the quantity of people that you have on your team. You don't need hundreds of coaches to, you know, to think that you need that to build a business and to be successful. You need to focus on those legit, you know, those quality people, your avatar, your dream team. So don't, um, there, there's a quote that I really kept thinking back to as she was talking and it's Pareto's Law. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this, but it's the fact that 20% of your coaches will bring 80% of your volume or your productivity. So just kind of think of that. So really focus on the quality of people. Okay, so getting into my things. The first is mindset. Um, I heard this and it really stuck with me is if you want to grow your team, you have to grow yourself first. So we already went over, you know, the, all the personal development and um, I, again, I love all these topics that we cover because everything combines into one. So 
if you want to grow your team, you have to grow yourself first. Um, you know, really dive into that personal development. You have to, you know, be good with yourself before you, you know, try to grow your team. Um, push past those fears and those limitations. Again, we talked about that back in the inviting videos. So everything that we've talked about before, I'm really just going to brush over. Um, but just really remember, like, how you felt when you started coaching. When your coach presented you um, this opportunity, how did you feel? Like, I doubt you were offended. I doubt that you felt, you know, so-and-so was salesy to you and that she was just trying to push, you know, SC points or whatever. Um, you really have to get in that mindset that this is a gift. Like, you're sharing an opportunity. You're sharing an outlet. You're sharing um, something for someone that they they may be looking for and you don't know what they're looking for until you start talking to them okay i hope you guys all grab some coffee my friend got me this look at that coffee and poop okay um so you're not selling um think of just being say a server or a waitress at a restaurant and they offer you dessert okay they you know you finish your meal and when don't they offer dessert or a final drink or can I get you anything else? They offer dessert and, you know, they're not, yes, it may be kind of in their, you know, regimen to, to ask you that, but do you feel offended by them asking you? Do you think that, you know, they're trying to really sell that dessert on you? Maybe, you know, of course, like everyone loves dessert, but they, you know, you're, you're sharing the opportunity and you're offering them this opportunity, Okay. So really just kind of encompass why, why did you become a coach and, you know, where, where were you at in your life and did you, did you feel offended? You know, so think, always put yourself in the people that you're talking to, their shoes, because you were there at one point in time. And if you get in that mindset of, you know, they're just, um, you just want to get those SC points or you really, you know, you're, it's the end of the month, you're pushing really hard. You can't forget, like, they're people. Like, you're talking to people. So it goes back to your avatar, your dream team. Like, we're building relationships with people, and you can't think of them as success club points. Like, this, yes, this is a business, but we're also, the bottom line is we are helping changing people's lives. We are helping end the trend of obesity. Like, we're helping people. That's what we're in this business for. So you have to get like, yes, this is a numbers business, but you have to get in that mindset that these are people with feelings and with goals and you need to ground yourself and remember that. Okay. I kind of jumped to a different point, but that kind of flowed really well. Um, so with back with mindset, you know, you have to that passion that you have, like you're obviously in this business for a reason. So you need to, you know, have that enthusiasm when you're talking to people, have that passion. Um, cause how, how you feel is how you're going to come off when you're talking to people on the phone, in messages, in your public posts. Um, who touched on that? Uh, I think Cassie, maybe Jenny too. They, they uh, probably a lot of people do, and this is an amazing idea. They listen to good morning, Tracy. They listen to personal development before they get, before they start inviting. Like that's, it's genius. And again, a li the littlest nugget and it, it's just incredible because you need to get in that mindset. You need to know, um, kind of your intentions. And if you're listening or reading your personal development before you go off inviting, people are going to sense that enthusiasm and that passion and that, um, you know, you're really being genuine and you're giving this opportunity rather than just, again, trying to, to push. Um, so my last couple tidbits with mindset is you have to treat this like a business. I'm sure that you've heard this before over and over again, but think of, you know, if you're, this is our business. I have my own business. I paid $170 for my own business, okay? Think if I started a franchise or a coffee shop or whatever, how much money I would have invested into starting that business and how, one, how many years I would be in the red for, you know, trying to get out of it, get out of the red or, you know, make profit, this, that. Um, but it's kind of how easily we could fall into that trap of, well, I spent $170 on this. You know, yeah, it might be a hobby. Yeah, you know, this, that. If you want to grow your business, you have to treat this like you invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in this business would you still be hired at your job right now 
if you were working the way you're working in your business. Does that make sense? You need to show up when you don't feel like it. You need to push past those fears. You need to just do it, okay? So I will get to actually recruiting in a couple minutes, I promise, but I really think that mindset is key. It's crucial to this entire business, okay? So when you're, you know, inviting people or, you know, working on building your team, like, push past that fear. What's the worst that can happen? You get a no, okay, or a not right now, or a maybe, or they don't even darn answer. Oh, well, like, great. You can still build that relationship, and you could still get to know them, and stop talking about the business and just get to know them. Like, did you invite them for a reason? I would hope that they were kind of part of your avatar and that you started talking to them um, for a specific reason. So get to know them, plant a seed, form them, okay? What is that? Family, occupation, recreation, message. Like, you need to really, um, Natalie talked about that last night. I wrote it down somewhere, but it was like, comment, compliment, and I don't remember the last one. Shoot. Um... Yeah, but she has her own system too. So it's just all about planting that seed and building that relationship. So, okay, that's it with mindset. Um, so next, oh good, the halfway done. Um, approaches and examples. So I'm going to go over just a few different ways that have been successful for me with recruiting and just building a team. Um, so first, is having a challenger and turning them into a coach or just presenting the opportunity to them um, with the coaching opportunity. So with challengers, um, if I'm talking to them about a challenge group or this or that, like I always, when we're ready to order, I always give them the option before they sign up. So before I send them the link, I'll, I'll, um, I know, again, people have touched on this before, but it's, it's crucial because, again, they may not know that this opportunity is even available. Um, even if they're looking to gr uh, build a business or just looking to get a discount, like I always present them that opportunity when they sign up. Um, also, I, my calendar is over on the couch, but I, I have one, a separate desk calendar. And just for people that sign up, challengers and coaches. And um, I follow up three weeks to post their order. So if someone orders today, I'll go on my calendar. Three weeks from now, I'll write their name down, um, what they ordered. Um, and if they're a coach customer, usually I, I would know that. But um, And so three weeks post their order, I have certain scripts in my Google Drive. Love Google Drive, by the way. I have certain messages that I'll send to a challenger you know hey how, how's it going like we may or may not have finished the challenge group wherever they may be at um you're coming up on your next shipment of Shakeology like I'm I'm super excited like what benefits did you feel from it how are you feeling how are you doing with your workouts um I could share these scripts afterwards if you want me to um but I, I give that follow up and kind of bring it full circle. I'll present that opportunity again. Hey, if you're, you know, I still see you have it on HD. If you're looking to get a discount every month, like let, let's do it. Like even if you don't want to build a business, we'll call you a preferred member and not a coach. Okay. So it comes back to just that trust of your customers or your challengers. Like you could talk to them, like just talk to them and tell them what's going on. Like talk to them how, you know, I talked to my parents when I got them signed up with Shakeology when they, um, with, cause they're coaches. Um, I just said like, this is, it's, there's no scam if ands or buts about it. Like you could just get a discount for it. Um, and then also with challengers, um, in the challenge group itself, um, that last week, um, we'll always, you know, present a post like to people that, um, it'll be a public post in the challenge group. It'll just say, you know, if you're looking to pay it forward, like you guys are rocking this challenge, um, yeah, if you're looking to pay it forward or inspire other people, like reach out, like give them options of, you know, um, things that they could go on from here. Um, you know, get into another challenge group or go into your grad group or become a coach. Always present that opportunity, little nuggets everywhere. Um, and every month I check in with, it's a mass email, um, but I check in with all of my customers, all of my coaches. I don't have a newsletter yet, but I am working on one. Um, but it's just an email in Gmail that I'll follow up with. And I, again, I have different emails for my coaches and my customers, and I'm creating a separate one for my leads right now. But 
again, I'll present that opportunity and that follow-up email. Nothing is like really overwhelming. It's just like little tidbits and little nuggets. So um, that's kind of that with challengers. I've, I've had a lot of success with um, having my challengers become coaches just because they know the products and you know they've been through they've started their journey already sometimes i'm not gonna lie it's hard to um someone may want to get started on their journey but they're nervous they're like well i don't even like i've never tried a product before how can i how can i you know try to promote it or this or that so like again don't get discouraged like again it's all about building relationships and getting to know people and building relationships um so the second part of recruiting is your public profile, okay? So you need, I know a lot of us um, have sneak peeks every month. Um, sorry, I've been really, talking really fast. I'm getting dry mouth. Um, but we all have our monthly sneak peeks, okay? Here on our public profile, you could darn sneak peek every single day. You could treat your public profile like a sneak peek, okay? So breadcrumb every single day. Um, you know, you have to get good at telling stories. Like I, when I started coaching, I almost deleted my Facebook, okay? So I was just like, oh gosh, I never post. Well, now I'll treat my profile like a journal, okay? So if I get scared about posting a post or I'm like, eh, I don't know if I want to post that, treat it like a journal. Like just act like, again, it goes back to mindset. Act like this is, you know, just your a journal. You're just typing your feelings out. You maybe tweak it a little bit. Some people, you know, people don't need to know darn everything. But treat it like a journal. Treat it like a sneak peek breadcrumb. Be relatable. So, um, you know, a couple things with me, like just I will talk financially. Um, with I know this is huge, obviously, for everyone. Groceries. Like buying groceries in the past. That's like a two, three hundred dollar pop. Like every single time, every trip, you're like, where am I going to get that money? I would be either taking money out of savings, looking up our checking account, seeing if I could afford it on my credit card because I refuse to ever get in any sort of credit card debt. Um, but, you know, little things like that. Like I'd be scrambling through four different accounts trying to make ends meet to be able to buy groceries. Be relatable. Share, you know, oh my God, I was able to fill my entire gas tank. Like, bam. As simple as that. Like, I used to only be able to put $5 in, you know, just to get me from point A to point B. Just be relatable. Like, I feel like with um, newer coaches, it's almost easier than, um, let's say, you know, if, like a 15-star superstar diamond. That Because some people may not be like, well, I can never be like her. So if you're a newer coach, darn, when you get your, that first paycheck, when you, um, you know, are able to fill your gas tank, share that. Like people can follow you from the start of your journey and hopefully jump on with you then, but it's more relatable. So don't be scared to share these little nuggets and tidbits. Um, you know, what has Beachbody done for you physically, your workout programs, emotionally, your PD, uh, financially, we kind of just talked about that. Personally, you're building relationships, share that. Share it on your public profile. Um, like for me, it's helped me get up earlier, my miracle morning, uh, you know, financially, my putting money in my gas tank, groceries, I have a balanced diet, my nutrition used to stink, it still kind of does sometimes. <laughs> but we're a working progress, like we're constantly working on bettering ourselves. Just you need to share that, okay? Keep it simple. So what do you do with uh, coaching? You know, what makes you happy with coaching? What fears do you have? Was it, you know, did you think it was too good to be true? Um, so not only share your personal life, but also throw those nuggets in with coaching. So you see, you see how that works? Like you could use your public profile and these little nuggets as jabs, coaching jabs. Your jabs don't always have to be about challenge groups or this so that. You could use, um, you know, little recruiting coaching jabs on your public profile. It's amazing. So, um, and then also posting publicly on your profile can help with um, private messages. Say if you answer objections publicly um, or, you know, anything like that. I'm almost at 20 minutes, so I'm going to wrap up. But, um yeah, your public post can help with your private messaging too because if you're posting publicly objections or, um, you know, recycle posts sometimes, like if you have a really good post, darn, use that again. Like 
I, I love that when I could create a really good post because I'm not creative at all. Um, and my last bit with um, approaches and examples is, hey girls, to relationship building, to feeling them out, to inviting, okay? So it all depends on where the conversation is going. Um, I'm, I really don't cold invite. I really don't. I did when I first started coaching, but I felt kind of nasty. And like I just felt like, well, these people probably don't even understand who I am, where I'm coming from. Again, put yourself in their shoes. If you got that message, how would you feel? Um, so... I'll always send a hey girl, that's really, or hey, their name, um, I, I always start with that. So even if I, it's not like a direct invite, like I'm building that relationship, I count that. Like, again, what are we in this business for? So keep it simple. Don't think like, oh my God, I have to invite, you know, 50 people today to the coaching opportunity. Talk to 50 people today or whatever that goal is. Um, you know, transition them from building that relationship, forming them, commenting on their stuff, engaging on their profiles, and then invite them. Use a, have you ever considered, or I think you'd be awesome at this, or you could benefit from this because, you know, and always end with a question. I know Natalie, oh, that was the last bit of her thing. Like, comment, compliment, question, yes. Um, so always end your messages with a question. Keep that conversation alive, okay? That's huge. Um, so my invites are always kind of just starting conversations, building relationships, and talking to people, okay? And then giving that invite when the time is right. Don't force it. Keep it simple. Um, couple just other little notes, and then I'm going to wrap up, give you your calls to action. Um, always add to your network. Like, I know this, is, it kind of comes back to recruiting, but you need to be adding to your network, getting, you know, that new blood, looking at your stuff and new contacts to start talking to. So you can't just go stagnant and be like, well, I'm talking to these people right now. Like, I don't need to be adding to my network. No, you constantly need to be adding new people to your network and starting new conversations. Um, I love that Cassie said this in her training call last Monday or a couple Mondays ago that she has meaningful scrolls on Facebook because I love that. I do too, but I never knew what to call it. Um, where you, you know, you just set aside a time and you'll scroll through Facebook and you like and comment the heck out of everything. Okay. Like how simple is that? And you kind of get to do a scroll on Facebook. Like I know how people turn off their nudes feeds and this and that. So, um, I, I love doing that because it kind of, I could revamp um, some conversations too, like, oh my gosh, I, I never followed up with her or, you know, I've been talking to her and gosh, it's been a few months. I can't believe it's been a couple months. I need to start that conversation again. So I do have meaningful scrolls. Um, again, forming, family, occupation, recreation, and message. Um, and make your reason for inviting genuine. Like I said, don't just spew out like something random, like make sure it flows in your conversation. Um, when the time is right, follow your heart. Like, again, have that mindset. This is a gift. You're sharing an opportunity. You're offering them something to help them somewhere in their life, okay? Um, 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 um. And then my, the last thing really is follow up and track. I feel like I could make a whole other video with this, but you need to have a system. Um, I know people talked about this with inviting um, a few weeks or last week whenever we had our inviting videos, but you need to follow up and track your people. I don't care if it's just, um, you know, a notebook, pen and paper, if you're using Streak or Teamsy, it doesn't matter. Like, you need some sort of system because you're going to make yourself go crazy if you don't. Okay, period, done, because I could go on and on about that. But also, okay, one more, and then I'm going to wrap up. It's okay to change things if it's not working. Don't think this is a black and white business. Um, my, my example is, you know, Instagram. I, I tried to really start, you know, just doing a lot of coach opportunity invites on Instagram because you could really see their profile and kind of see who they are um, on Instagram right away, you know. So I, this was a few months back and I, it wasn't working. I just, I did, I couldn't master it. And I, I felt like I just didn't have the time to um, put forth so much energy and just time and just frustration towards Instagram because it just doesn't work for me. Um, I do love Instagram. 
Um, and I'm, I was still a work in progress, but I wasn't going to focus my inviting on Instagram because I knew that I didn't have it mastered. So you can't get discouraged if you have to make a change. Just accept that you need to make a change. So what I did is, okay, I need to focus on mastering Facebook. Okay, I'm just going to use Facebook. And when I go on Instagram, I'm going to see because a lot of times I'm Facebook friends with them on Instagram. That's just kind of... It just how they link and stuff like that. So I will, if someone likes my picture, this or that, I'll, I'll see that. And then I'll shoot over to Facebook and I'll message them from there. I'll go to their profile, like, comment on their stuff, and then I'll message them. So that's kind of how I um, have started to transform that over. So I know that was a little off topic, but I just don't feel like you can't change things up if it's not working. Change up your scripts. Tweak your, um, you know, posting habits or posting styles. Um, you know, change how you start to talk to people. Like, if you're getting, like, just crickets, like, just change how you start your conversation. Like, don't feel like you can't change things up. Like, don't get discouraged to make a change. Okay? Yes, change is good. Awesome. Yeah. So, okay, calls to action. Um, what messages will you send your challengers to transition them to coaches? How do you do that? If you don't do that right now, write one out. Just write out a simple little script and then you could tweak it as you go, okay? Share that in the comments below. Um, also, I want you to post on your public profile a coaching jab, okay? Just a little nugget. Doesn't have to be a cook. Don't, you know, fill out this application at the bottom. Don't do that. Just a coaching jab, okay? So just to leave you guys, don't overthink it. Keep it simple. You're never going to be perfect, so just be you, okay? Have a good day, guys. I have to go get ready for my run. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend, and I hope I didn't talk too fast. Have a good day, guys.